The bend modifier allows us to bend an object in our scene. So here we have a fishing pole and we're going to go ahead and apply a bend modifier to the rod and bend this object. So let's go ahead and apply that. So we'll go to our modifier list and bend. And you'll notice that we get a gizmo that pops up around our fishing pole. And you'll also notice that bend is showing up in our modifier stack. Now let's go ahead and discuss our parameters and then we'll discuss how we can actually control this bend. So the angle will actually adjust the amount of bend that we have on our geometry. So if we take this to 90 degrees, we will get a 90 degree bend along this entire piece of geometry here. Now the direction will determine which direction it actually bends. Okay, And this is also adjusted by angle as well. So if we go to 90, it is bent in this 90 degree direction to the right here. So let's go ahead and take this back down to zero because I want this to look like as if it's being pulled down into the water or something like that. All right, now the next section that we have is called bend axis. And the bend axis basically determines what is the local axis that this modifier is being applied to our object. So in this case, we have Z selected. And I've switched this to our local reference coordinate system so we can actually see the local direction of this object. And Z is this direction outward. So this is why it's bending in this direction. Now if we change this to X, we get a very odd bend. Okay, and If we change it to Y, we really don't say, see much of a change at all in the Y direction. Okay, It kind of actually kind of looks like it's flailing out toward the top and the bottom, so we get a little bit of a taper. We can really see it on the handle here. So let's go to Z, seeing how that's what we're looking for here. And the next section that we have is called Limit. Okay, And let's go ahead and apply a limit effect, because this will actually limit what part of this bend will be applied to this object. So we notice that it's bending from this end all the way down to this end. And on a fishing pole, we want it to bend from this point down to the end, not necessarily bending the handle. So we can actually achieve that by using this limit effect. So let's go ahead and check that. And you'll notice that it's basically not applying any type of bend to this. It's really not flexible at all. So let's go ahead and adjust our upper limit. And let's just keep dragging this up. and Let's go ahead and type in 100 just to get a, a good number going. And we'll go up from there. Okay, So about 180 is the overall distance of our fishing pole here, maybe a little higher than that. Okay, Now, you'll notice that even though we're putting this limit on here, it's still bending from this point down to this point. And that's because of the gizmo here. So let's go ahead and expand our bend modifier and choose gizmo. And this will actually allow us to move, where, uh, move to where we want this gizmo to start bending and where to end. So let's go ahead and go to our front view. So let's hit F on the keyboard. And with our move tool turned on, we can actually move this gizmo. And I'm going to go ahead and move it right up to this point here. Okay, and try to center this up on the fishing pole the best that I can. There we go. And now we can see that this bend modifier is being applied to just the rod itself, not necessarily the handle. Okay, so from here we can go ahead and turn off that gizmo and actually adjust our limit effect here. Okay, so now we can see how this is being applied. And now you can actually animate these parameters as well. So let's say we want to take this back down to zero. And we want to go ahead and animate this. We can animate it turning on auto key and adjusting our angle. Okay, so we take this down to 90 degrees. And let's go ahead and make this very abrupt. Let's make some really twitchy uh, type movements here. Okay, so let's take this one to five. Let's go ahead and go down to 30. And we'll do a couple of these. I just want to show you that these parameters can be animating and have a lot of fun with these different ones. So let's go to let's go to seven again on this one. And we'll go a couple more. And then we'll do one great big one 
right here at 15. Okay. So now as we play this, notice that your fishing pole gets a little bit of twitching going on and then it really takes off there. Okay. All right, so this is how we can use the bend modifier inside of 3ds Max.